Uh, so you guys, did you guys do these two problems on your notes yesterday? I don't remember. It should be on there, right? What percent of the class is female and conservative? What percent of females are moderate? Do you have answers for them? I know we didn't talk about it in the class. Okay, do you want, are these two, these two are in your notes though, right? No? Oh. Well. I'm going to have you guys do those here in a second. I got to turn my thing on. I forgot to turn my margins on. When you go back and listen to these lectures, is this part where I'm fumbling with my with what I'm doing up here, like, is it entertaining at all? Does it make you think, oh, I miss being in class? Like, you see Mr. Gilly making an ass of himself. Come on. There we go. Bring that back. There we go. Uh, okay, so can we answer those two real quick? What percent of the class is female and conservative? What percent of females are moderate? I'm going to give you like a little over a minute. Connor and I are about to do female. Yeah. Yeah, I would say have them as a fraction. If you feel the need to convert it to a decimal and a percent, do so. But all three of those answers are good. What's up? Oh, I, oh man. Right. Yeah, it does. What was this one? This one was. Oh, I see what I did. I switched the two. I switched the order. Oh. Seems like this is here. That, that's that's better, right? That's yeah. that's correct now. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, Devin, tell me, what percent of the class is female and conservative? Zero percent. And we know that from... Yeah. Well, ooh, careful. This one's not out of the nine. Out of the 19, because it's female and conservative. We're looking at total total, so that's zero over 19. Uh, okay, good. Uh, what percent of females are moderates? Derek, tell me. One out of the... Wait, say that again? Four out of nine, yes. We've got female moderates there, and because it's saying what percent of females, I only care about the nine females, and so this is four out of nine, right? Again, the, the phrasing of the question is telling you where to find your total, right? Whether you're looking, uh, where where in the table you're looking, and then what total you should be using, right? If it's of females, we're just looking at females, and so it's this. Uh, or what percent of females, it's this nine over here. You guys got to catch me on this real quick. If it's of females, it's this nine over here, not this nine down here. Can we just say that it's an off day for me and I'll be better tomorrow? Right? 
You want to know what it is? You want to know what it is? Because I didn't have time to do my hair. I didn't have time to do my hair. The part over here is falling off to the right instead of going over there. Right. And that's what it is. Yeah. We're going to blame it. Blame it on my head. What I'll probably do is, like, if we, we'll do some problems a little bit later. I'll be like, excuse me, guys. <laughs> oh, I have a comb. I keep that on. It's uh, it's a comb that works for both my hair. And my hair. You gotta come out here, otherwise. And what happens if his hair gets messed up in the hallway? Can he reach into his backpack? No. You never know. I mean, I, I'm the only married person in this room, so I'm the only one that has no one to impress. So you gotta look. You gotta look impressive all the time. Uh, all right. So uh, within a frequency table, we can limit the who of the data if we want to see if there's a relationship between two specific variables. And when I say limit the who, uh, we can use uh, we can use an entire contingency table and look specifically at one row or one column in order to tell if there are differences between the categories of the other variable. Uh, so hopefully you've gotten into your chapter three a little bit by now. Again, remember uh, you have four days, five days to do your chapter three notes. Not because I want you to do them all on Thursday night but because I want you to do a little bit every day. So hopefully you've gone through and read some Titanic examples. Um, we, we wanted to ask the question of, did the chance of surviving the Titanic depend on your ticket class, right? Were you more likely to survive if you were in first class, second class, third class, or a group? Okay. And so we can look at the evidence of that by looking at how the ticket class changes between survivors or how the survivors change between the ticket class. In this case, this question here, how does ticket class change between survivors? We're looking at row percentages, meaning we're going to look specifically at our rows. So let's bring that table up. There it is. And notice that our when we're looking at row percentages, our marginal distribution over here uh, adds up to 100% on the rows. So if we're, as we're looking at this particular table, um, we can see that uh, if you were alive, and notice the, notice the wording there, right? If you were alive, or of those people alive, 28.6% of them were in first class, 16.6% of them were in second class, 25.0% were in third class, and 29.8% were in the crew. So if you were alive at the end of the day, there's kind of like a 28.6% chance that you were in first class. There was a 16.6% chance that you were in third class. There was a 25% chance you were in, or excuse me, second, 25% you're in third, and there's a 29.8% chance that you were part of the group. So if we were to take all of the passengers that were alive, and we were to randomly choose one, this is kind of like the 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 distribution of percentages, the chance that they would be in each individual class. If you were dead, there was an 8% chance that you were in first class. There's an 11.2% chance that you are in second class. There's a 35.4% chance that you are in third class. And there's a 45% chance that you are in third class. Notice that column-wise, these two percents are not adding to 100. They're adding to something totally unrelated. But if we look at it this way, they add to 100. Because we're looking at a row percentage. We are limiting the way that we Think about this problem to either being alive or being dead, right? That's sort of like our condition. We're going to take all of the alive people, right? And we're going to put them on the shore 
and then we're going to randomly choose one. If you were alive, these are the percentages that we would choose for somebody from that particular group. Uh, we're going to take all of the dead people, right? And, you know, we're going to stack their bodies or something, right? And we're going to randomly choose one of them. Yeah, it's, it's gruesome. It's gruesome, right? And we're going to randomly choose one. These are the percentages that we would randomly choose them. So, like, if I stacked up the dead people and randomly chose one of them, there's an 8.2% chance that I would pick a first class person. So looking at this, right, maybe looking at uh, the people who were dead, uh, what class do you want to be in? Do you want to be in first class or do you want to be in the crew? <laughs> Well, and so, so here's, here's the bigger psychological question, right? If there's somebody out here who's maybe having some dark thoughts, maybe they want to be first. If you are, please go talk to me, right? We can work this out. Uh, if you're not having dark thoughts, oh. you probably want to be first. Class. No, no, we're talking about dead people. Yeah, we're talking about dead people, right? Uh, no. If you look at the dead people based on these row percentages, it's uh, it's a lot more likely that uh, you're going to pick a crew member than you are going to pick a first class member. Because if we stacked all of the dead people up, only 8.2% of them were first class members. So it kind of means that 8.2% of first class died. Whereas 45% of the crew died. So you probably, if you're wanting to live, Right, you probably want to be in first class, and if you're the crew, then some stuff. Right? You could work that out. That's not a thing that we should be, we should be dealing with right now, right? Uh, so based on these numbers, seems like probably not an even distribution, right? You are much more likely to be dead if you're in the crew than if you were in first class. Any questions we have to say about that? Because that's kind of a, it's kind of weird looking between the two. And in a second, we're going to change this whole thing to columns instead of rows. He was third class or crew? Wasn't he? he wasn't crew. She was first class. <laughs> I've never seen it either, so don't worry. Right? When I was in, it came out when I was in high school, and I purposefully avoided it, like because when I was in high school, I was like, well, that's the cool thing to do, and I'm gonna go be counterculture because I'm because that's me.